I I basically I'm streaming from another place and I will be doing this for the next weeks. Uh, so I my setup is basically back to just one screen, and it, I seem to be able to only capture the browser for some reason. But okay, um, which is maybe not bad. Um, We'll just try to stick to the browser then, see if that works well. But yeah, essentially, what I've been doing in the past is focusing on, like, obsessively on this exercise. And I've gotten as far as just finding a solution that is almost like the one here. So what I will do is I'm definitely going to actually ask for some help, I think. Because I've gotten there, but not, like, not with these exponents, just one half. And so... There might just be a mistake here. There might just be some minor thing that I'm missing. So I'll I'll see if anyone else can can if someone else can actually help me uh, understand where is that missing? <clears throat> because I mean, at least I don't know. This uh, at least it feels like um, I've been able to uh, and to learn new things like the uh, you know polar integrals and stuff like that, which I was not aware of. Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm happy that I that I actually try to go as deep as I could, and uh, I did take something interesting out of this, something useful out of that. Now, we should kind of uh, I want to go back to the um, the next sort of step in here, which is um, showing that the probability density of finding the particle with momentum h bar k is isotropic. Um, so it does not depend on the direction <clears throat> of the momentum. Because the, the thing here is, so here there's, there's a big step that was it's still unknown to me, which is the conversion between um, uh, position and momentum, right? So here, and I, I, wanna, I, I really care less about the exercise results specifically, um, but what I want to understand is the logic of how how are these things translated so here there's a bunch of things and so this is you know yeah there's a bunch of things in here um and i think that doesn't depend on on the result of a because i still use n um <clears throat> so we have taken the z-axis of integration variables to coincide with the momentum direction. Hmm. So what do they? Okay. So what what do they want to? So what is it that they're asking? They're asking whether. So the probability density density of. So first, it's two things. First, I need to find a way to convert that. Um, a way to convert that to, um, to the momentum stuff which here they they do do something like that which it's weird this is something that i really don't understand but they seem to just be translating something here like uh let's see they just seem to add this thing here the end of so there's some kind of like it almost feels like it's just a um kind of a multiplication which if we think classically, momentum definition. Um, what is a simple definition of momentum? Momentum mm, position conversion. <clears throat> I, I'm I'm definitely interested in in the classical things first. Spaces. You're, ca you're catching that up, right? Yeah, yeah, actually. It's cool, actually, to just use the browser. Maybe that's that's even easier. Um, position space and momentum space. Uh, quantum mechanics uh, <clears throat> and classical mechanics. So... Let's see. Exactly, because <clears throat> it's definitely something about um, this. Definitely, a sort of a derivative um, 
association to it, right? Because in a way, the fastest, sort of the, the, the speed in which you change your position, it's somehow proportional to the momentum. Because um, momentum is, first thing, so I start to understand what's the relationship between um, between the two variables and momentum is really just something that's, that's it's velocity right it's just velocity times the mass but let's just ignore mass for now so it's literally velocity so it's it's the derivative really so it's funny because if i look at the solution it almost seems like this is what's happening here in a way there's some re some weird renaming happening here Okay, because this R, but then there's this kind of factor added to it with X. But in essence, it's like there's a there's a triple derivative of X because because yeah because X is you know because it's position. So then there's this funky thing here. But essentially, this is just as simple as. Okay, wait a second, but there's an integral. What are we integrating over though? Why? Because it's a sum, it's an infinite sum of what? I'm not so sure why you have to do the integral though. But I mean, in Lagrangian mechanics, so canonical momentum Hamiltonian mechanics it, it is essentially it is essentially velocity right I think in quantum mechanics. As an integral, so. So suppose we have a three dimensional wave function in position space. Then we can write this function as a weighted sum of orthogonal, um, of orthogonal basis functions. Mm -hmm. It is clear that if we if we specify the set of functions psi k, say as the set of eigenfunctions of the momentum operator, and the function holds all the information necessary to reconstruct psi r. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so so the momentum operator. Oh, look at this. So he is. He, so this is this is what's being applied there, I guess. This here, square root of two pi. Yeah. Mhm. Mm so that's that's really it. Okay. So this is just a just a prescription. Okay. So I just put this in here. Whatever that is, whatever that is. Um, okay, so that's the general thing. I'm I'm not so sure I intuitively understand why. Uh, The eigenfunctions are this. How is that derived, though? Okay, so. Suppose that we have a three-dimensional wave function in position in position space. 
then we can write this function as a weighted sum of orthogonal basis functions. This is what's a bit. This is what, what what's a bit. Um, this is what's a bit abstract, right? But it's kind of the same idea, just translated to functions. It's the same idea of like, you know, I can have I can have a vector, right? And I can just also write that vector as a function of the sort of the a, a basis, and then some weights to it. I can always do that. Right, I think, and I think just th this is something that you can do with functions as well. I just have to accept that in a way. It's a bit. It, this is really. This is quite abstract, right? It, but it's a. It makes sense in a way. It's like everything. I don't know if it's something. Yeah, it, it's funny. I don't know if it's something that it's always true for every kind of construct. That's it. Just uh, you have a, you have a f even for functions, right? K so it's quite quite crazy. The concept of eigenfunction is quite crazy. An eigenfunction of an operator is a function such that the application of on gives again times it. What the? <laughs> uh, uh, an eigenfunction of a linear operator. That's not a function. In that space, that when x upon by d is only multiplied by some scaling factor, yeah. It's just in a in a way what you're saying is everything is there's always sort of a reference to anything to everything, and so you can always write something as it doesn't matter if it's a vector, it's a function, it's um, uh, you know whatever it is, right? And, and that is that is what this eigen stuff is about and and that is essentially what an eigen and what sort of the eigenvalues what the eigen eigenvectors of a matrix are if you assume if you, if you understand a matrix it just makes it makes sense as in like if you understand a matrix as a matrix as a function right or as a transformation there's always yeah so essentially, this is always like a everything can be decomposed kind of story. So with a function is the same. So what you're saying is let's let's assume we have a wave function, and let's assume that we can write this function as a as a weighted sum of some some orthogonal basis functions. So so you have this this psi j eigenfunctions which we don't know about, and then it's a sum of these. Or in the continuous case, that's the integral, and that's and that's where the integral comes in. Okay, so. So you have this integral, and then you have these these coefficients in here. Cool. Uh, D three k, D three k. I'm not so sure what this k space in here means, though. But is it clear that if we specify the set of functions? Psi k r say as a set of eigenfunctions of the of the momentum operator. Uh, the function psi, this function holds all the information necessary. That's that's yeah, that's true. Okay, so uh, the co coefficients of these hold all the inform information necessary. But I'm not so sure. Yeah, to reconstruct these momentum of the momentum operator. So in essence, what you're saying is uh, the momentum operator. So it's an alternative description of the state. Psi. In quantum mechanics, the momentum operator is given by these. So, so you have this momentum operator, and so these are the eigenfunctions. Okay. So, uh -huh. so, so essentially, what you're saying is, okay. So these are the. So, so what you're doing is calculating the eigenfunctions. However, the fuck would you do that? Eigenfunctions of momentum operator. That's something interesting to look at. Eigen 
functions of momentum. So eigenfunctions of momentum operator. And so that's definitely something I want to take a look at because I want to understand how, how we get there intuitively. I know that's, that's, that's damn complicated, but it's uh, eigenfunctions of momentum operator. That's why we, that's, that's why I definitely want to step in next in the next streaming session, hopefully tomorrow or something like that. So this is where these things come from, but then how do you put things together? So then you're saying, okay, so these are the eigenvalues. Okay, but you then still have these. How do you plug in, how do you? Hmm. And we see that the momentum representation is related to the position representation by a Fourier transform. No, really? Ugh. With eigenfunctions. And so what do they do here? Is they say, what the heck? Okay. Am I looking at the, am I looking at the, Am I looking at the opposite transformation? I think so. Yeah, that's what I that's what I want. I think that's definitely what I want. Yeah. Uh, okay, so so. Okay, so you're looking at so you're saying okay, so something that's in momentum space can be expressed as a weighted sum of orthogonal bases, boom. And so you're saying is you're saying this is, so you're just saying, um. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, so you're taking the eigenvalues of the position operator. So that's what we want to look at, not the momentum operator, because that's your so position operator eigenfunction. That's what we want to look at. Uh, at least in a way, at least trying to understand these, because that's what what he is. That's what you're saying. So you're saying you, you take the position operator and and find the eigenfunctions of it and then express. So these are the eigenfunctions and saying what you're saying is that uh, Which turns out to be the inverse for your transform. E minus I K R. And that's where, yeah. So that is where this comes from because this is basically E times like you know, this is this is our function, it's times this thing here. So this is where this is where this is coming from. Yeah. Dr. Blah blah blah. So d3x. Um, x x x. Okay. Uh, dr. D3r. R space. And then they do some kind of funky stuff in here. They say, okay, that's more or less these. 
and then we square that and yeah okay so then the next step is and so the first step is understanding how that switch so that switch and i think now like what's confusing is the whole thing about i like about fourier transforms and whatnot because it's like people i don't know you tend to find that online that it's somehow for some reason i i always thought it just you do some kind of Fourier transform or something like that. But it, this is just intuitive in the sense that what you're doing is you're expressing it using the eigenfunctions of another basis. Uh, but I'm, I, yes and no, I'm not entirely sure that I understand this though. Why would that give me, why would that give me momentum? It still somehow depends on, okay, that's not dependent position because you're integrating over it. But then what does it depend on? You know what I mean? <clears throat> that is a funky one. <laughs> I would have I would never be able to do something like that. Oh my god. Oh Jesus. Nice. Is that is that the entire? Oh no, that's e. That's something else. Okay, so this is where. <laughs> what are we doing? First of all, we're doing. No, we're doing b. Sorry. Okay, so b is these. Oh, it's just until here. Okay. <laughs> uh Okay, so it, they do get to something where it's like it depends on the mass and then some kind of like, and time? Oh my God. That's what I don't understand is like how, like that's, that still depends on R. So you're integrating over these, but then it almost feels like it, it, it kind of turns unitless. So I don't really know, I don't really understand uh as a function of what like how do you yeah i'm not so sure i understand that so maybe what i should do is i should actually just go through some some more specific version of these okay i think i understand the three-dimensional wave function in momentum space can be expressed as a weighted sum of, a th of, an, of another orthogonal basis function, a set of functions. Um, <clears throat> and so, and, and then you take the position operator. I, I'm not so sure I understand the intuition behind like why, why, why does these work? But okay, it's one step a little bit forward. <clears throat> 